What is up? Welcome back to my channel. Long time no talk, right? So today I have a Q&A that I wanted to do with you guys. I also wanted to kind of catch you guys up on where I was. And I know there has been one big question that everyone's been asking me, so I'm gonna save that until last. So where was I the last couple weeks? Well, it was the Mercury retrograde, which means communication and all that stuff with Mercury. Most of you guys that have been following me for a while, you're probably not surprised when I go into hiding during the retrograde. I tend to get a lot more kind of crazy people that come out and come at me on social media and crazy stuff happens with electronics when I try to film and edit. So during the retrograde, that's usually my forced break from the universe. Plus last week I started film school. Speaking of that, I will be doing a vlog on my first week at film school, except it will be posted to my other channel. And I am looking, I was just looking for, um, I had some giveaways. I was gonna do the giveaways on this channel, but they are, they're makeup, so it's like girly skull makeup. There's like some skull bath bombs. I got some free makeup from one of the companies that sends me stuff. And so I thought I would do a kind of giveaway with that for anyone that's interested, but you have to watch my other video that I will post tonight on my other channel. And you will also have to be subscribed and like that video and leave a comment below if you want to be entered into the giveaway. Once again, that's on my other channel, not this video. So anyway, where have I been? I started film school. It was quite an adventurous last week and um, some good things really kind of happened towards the end of the week. So let's get to some of your questions and some of them are paranormal, some of them aren't. And then we'll have like the big discussion at the end. So this is kind of a cool question. Someone asked if I had a squad, who would be in my girl squad? Well, unfortunately, I think I would be rolling with some really independent chicks, which if I mention to you guys who would be in my squad, you'll see what I mean. That the girls I would hang with probably wouldn't even want to be in a squad to begin with. So I was like, Gwen, Haley from Paramore, Pink, um, Taylor Monson, Kat Von D, Lizzie Hale, Polly Perrette, who plays Abby on CSI, and maybe even Lana Del Rey. So all those girls are pretty independent. They don't really roll in squads, if you know what I'm saying. Here's a good question. Does my friends and family know what I do with Paranormal and Production, and in particular, high school friends? So I was actually closer with my elementary school friends growing up, and the answer to that is yes. All of my elementary school friends are well aware of what I do. They are very accepting of what I do. Um, I was always really different and into, you know, horror and uh, Halloween and creepy stuff. So they are not shocked by it because I've known them pretty much my entire life. I have to admit that my elementary school friends I'm probably closest to, even above like middle school and high school friends. Now, interestingly enough about like family and, you know, people like in high school that I went to high school with, I don't stay in touch with too many people I actually went to high school with. I had a long-term boyfriend in high school and I was kind of antisocial a little bit. But just recently I did have a bunch of my high school friends that found me. Uh, somehow they found out that I was doing paranormal and I'd been on TV and that I was doing this channel and they did just recently find me. And that was kind of awkward, I have to say. Not because they don't know me or anything, it's just that, um, you know, when you lose contact with someone for that long and then they find out into the paranormal like I have, it's um, a different conversation. But I have to say that the good people that, you know, I knew from high school that, that are following me, they, they were well aware that I was all interested in, in dark, creepy, paranormal stuff. So they are happy for me that I have gone on the path of, you know, following my heart. 
Now, as far as my family, that's a funny conversation too. So of course, like my intermediate family is well aware of what I'm doing. Now, I know I've talked before that I have like distant cousins and toxic cousins and most of my cousins, actually I would say every single one of my cousins um, had no idea, you know, even like aunts and uncles didn't really know that I was doing paranormal. They recently also found me on like YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. They had no idea what I was doing. So I think that they're, um, I want to say that they're a little bit shocked just because you know, some of them, like, unfortunately, you grow apart when you get older. So I don't know if they really knew how interested I was in paranormal when they move away and then you lose contact or, you know, stop communicating with each other. So a couple of my cousins are kind of shocked at what I do, but I'm just following my true self. So I just have to be me. And that's all that anybody should do is always be yourself. What was my favorite school subject in high school or elementary school? So my favorites were probably like art and choir. I was in choir. And then my least favorite subject was probably history, which probably doesn't sound like it makes sense to you guys because obviously I love history now. I feel like it's all about who is teaching you as well. I feel like whoever the instructor is, it's very important because I always found history extremely boring and I have to blame my teachers and professors and instructors for that because if they make it boring and monotone, you're not gonna wanna be interested in it. So obviously I love history now and obviously that's changed. Most people would say math was their most hated subject, but I always wanted to just sleep in history and um, which is really ironic considering that's basically what I do now is all history. Do I have a celebrity crush? Yes, I do. Some of my paranormal girls that follow me know this because they um, talk to me about it often. So um, one of them is Brock O'Hearn. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. He's very pretty. Um, he has long hair. Um, if you are one of my paranormal girls and you're not following Brock, well, you should be on his Instagram page. And then my other celebrity crush is actually Tim Tebow. And that's, I don't know. I know he was with the Broncos and yeah, I'm from Denver and stuff, but that really isn't why. Tim Tebow, I follow him on social media and he is always paying it forward to like help kids with developmental disabilities and he's just always helping and I don't know, I feel like when someone has a heart of gold, that makes them more attractive than any looks could ever make them look. So um, I just think Tim Tebow is, his heart is beautiful and so he's definitely one of my celebrity crushes. Do I have a favorite movie? Yeah, probably, I talked about 13 Ghosts before, but if we're talking about like a film directing um, production sort of professional setup that is um, something that I love to watch, the movie Memento, if you guys have ever seen it, it's almost, um, I guess the only way I can explain it if you haven't seen it is the story actually plays kind of backwards, so from ending to beginning. And so it takes a lot of um, kind of critical thinking. I love stuff like that. So if you guys are looking for kind of a challenging movie to watch to kind of be a brain bender, you should either buy or rent Memento. It's actually a really beautiful movie. The way the directors have worked on it, the way the production was set up, it's amazing. So yeah, that's one of my favorites. Do I have a fear of anything? I'm afraid of anything that flutters, so like butterflies or moths, I'm getting better. I'm getting better with that. My other fear is water, which I've talked about before, uh, which has got to be related to a past life issue. Yes, I can swim. I've never been on a boat. I've never been on a cruise. I don't plan on being on either of those. <laughs> so um, it's not... Um, I don't know what the fear is. It's not drowning. It's not um, It's not the deep blue. It's not really sharks. It's like uh, The submersion part I guess is what scares me which is why I sometimes think it had to have been related to a past life So yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of water Namingly mainly like seawater. It's not really pools if you know what I mean if I could own a p exotic pet What would it be? Well actually exotic pets most of them not all of them are allowed in Vegas But I don't think I would own one because it would be way too much to take care of one and you need people to help you take care of them 
So if I could own a pet, if there weren't any rules, which obviously there are, but um, if we're playing for fun, I love panthers. So I think that panthers would be like a beautiful, exotic, really cool pet to have. And um, I'm a big fan of like pandas and red pandas. Those are like my favorite animals. So I just think it'd be fun to have a panda or a koala. They just want to like give you hugs all the time. Do I have any pet peeves? Everybody has pet peeves, right? So one thing I absolutely hate is like the sound of loud chewing. Like I will get up and walk away and like have to go sit somewhere else. And I also don't like to be pushed. Like, you know, like you're, you need to keep going. Like we're an hour late, da -da, or whatever. I'm not someone that likes to be pushed. That's probably the Taurus in me. Um, and if you push me, I'm like a stampeding bull. So <laughs> those are my pet peeves. Do I have any annoying habits? Probably. I probably annoy a lot of people. Um, <laughs> I don't really know what they are specifically. Um, but yeah, I probably am annoying and I don't mind being annoying. Who inspires me or do I, what do I get inspiration from? Uh, I'm a big poetry person. Like I really love poetry. One of my favorite poets is Robert Frost. If you can ever get a hold of one of his books with all of his poems in it, it's just something amazing and beautiful to have um, just to add to your like library collection. I'm also a really big fan of Tim Burton and it's not necessarily the side of like, okay, he did Alice in Wonderland or he did, um, you know, I, of course I loved Edward Scissorhands, but he talks about how unaccepted he was for being different that, you know, when he first started out in film, no one really saw his visions as a director. No one really understood where he was going with things. And so just his words of wisdom inspire me, which is it's okay to be different. It's okay to be weird. You don't want to, you know, be a blend in with the crowd. Like I feel like sometimes society teaches us that we need to blend in and be alike and wear the same clothes and be interested in the same things. So my inspiration comes from Tim Burton when he's like, it's okay to be weird. You want to be weird. You want to be different. You don't want to be like everyone else because that's the purpose. You're not supposed to fit in here on earth. You're supposed to be only one of you. So I've always really liked his, his words of wisdom. If I had a life theme song, what would it be? That's a really good question, whoever asked that. Um, definitely, lately, I've been having just a girl issues from No Doubt. Um, and I've, I've fought that for a while. I've fought um, issues in the industry of obviously paranormal because there's just no females in the industry. I mean, very few, as you guys know. But there are none that mix, you know, not just the paranormal knowledge with, like, the... Um, engineering knowledge with the scientific knowledge and then mixed with the production knowledge like no one exists so it's a difficult battle it's an uphill battle that I'm always battling being a female being a producer being in the you know film industry it's always been male driven obviously paranormal is male driven and um, I will be talking about this on my other channel with my vlog with the giveaway um, that I had kind of a negative experience with film school last week um, being a girl, basically just being a female. So that's always going to be a struggle. Um, I get tired of fighting sometimes, but I'm not going to give up. But my life theme song would definitely be Just a Girl by No Doubt. If I could have any dream vacation of somewhere that I haven't been, not paranormal related, what would it be? So two states I haven't been to is Alaska and Hawaii. I don't really think I'd want to live there, <laughs> either of those places, but uh, being from Colorado with all the snow and the winters, I think I would love just enjoying Alaska for like a vacation or for like three or four days. I'm not a big hiker, but I do love nature from living in Colorado. Um, you're very much surrounded by all the naturey stuff. And then Hawaii, just I've never been to Hawaii. That's one place I'd love to go. I think it'd be a really fun vacation if you could find some of the really cool places that not all tourists go, you know, like a private beach or something like that. So two places I definitely want to hit eventually. Okay, so the last thing that I want to address is, um, you know what, to be perfectly honest, I had kind of a rough week last week. I had... Um, an issue with a professor at school, um, which I don't want to talk about here. I'll talk about on the other channel. But I was a little bit bummed out. I had kind of a rough week um, because I didn't want to start film school out rough like that. And I sporadically got a text message from Zach and he asked me to 
come down to the museum and he was gonna show me around and I also had an interview. So in a weird change turn of events from having such a bad week, um, I basically interviewed with Zach, potentially be the resident ghost hunter of Zach's museum, which I was in shock because I feel like that's a, a big compliment, right? Like for him to um, say, you know what, you're, you're a great investigator, you're good enough that I might potentially want you you know, to be the resident investigator here at my location. Nothing is official yet, although I did get a message from him today that he said he probably will put me on as, <laughs> so I don't know what probably will means, I'm not gonna hold him to it, but it sounds like it's a dream job. So if that does happen in the future, um, I will be completely quitting field production and I will only be working as the resident ghost hunter um, for Zach at the museum. And I'll also be going to school to part-time to continue to um, get my degree. So I'll probably be traveling um, to LA just a couple of days a week for school and then back um, to Vegas to work at the museum. If that happens, like I said, nothing's set in stone yet. I don't wanna jinx myself. Um, if it doesn't happen and he chooses someone else, that's okay too. And um, I'm just like feel honored and privileged that I got to talk to him and that you know he thinks that much of me as an investigator. So in the meantime, I wanna tell you guys about the museum. I know everyone's dying to hear about this. And I also wanna tell you basically before um, what happened before I went to the museum, when I was at the museum and when I left the museum. And I actually already had filmed this video last night, as you guys know that follow me on Snapchat, and I had something else happen. So I decided to wait so that I could t put this whole story together for you now. So I'd gotten a text message from Zach, come down to the museum, I want you to see it. So I was getting my stuff together, I like had to gather my resume and all that stuff. And I had decided, you know what, I don't know what he has in the museum. Obviously he has eternal residence. I did decide to take the rosary that I have and I put it in some salt water just to keep it like cleansed, healing, protection, you know, all that stuff. And I only left it in there for like maybe a minute because I was running like kind of late and I was like hurrying. And so I dumped the water out of the cup and got the rosary out. And I just lightly held it in my hand because I was going to kind of let it air dry before I actually wore it. So as I'm walking through my house kind of gathering my stuff, I literally just had it kind of resting in my hand um, and it was dangling down so kind of long ways. And as I was getting ready to walk out of the house, the rosary actually broke. Well, I was actually shocked. It was just like a jump ring. I don't know if you guys know, like the jump rings kind of interact like this and one of them had kind of pulled apart. So I did run into my office and fix it really fast, but I did find it really kind of strange because I've had that rosary for a long time. It's never broke before and it kind of scared me considering I was getting ready to go into Zach's museum. So I fixed it, I put it back on and I headed down to the museum. So I did actually interview with the manager at um, the museum. He's a really cool guy. And then after that, Zach was waiting for me um, in another room. So the manager walked me to this other room where Zach was sitting. And Zach was sitting, um, like he had like a wooden chair kind of here, and then there was another chair in front of him. And I haven't seen him in a while, obviously, and so I was kind of taken back by the way the energy felt and it wasn't the room it was something about the chair the way it was sitting the way it was facing Zach the chair itself I don't know I didn't know what it was but I didn't like the chair and I really didn't want to sit down so I walked in he's like hey what's up you know how are you and I was like hey how are you and I said this is just I said no offense but like this is scary just the way it's set up and he was like well what do you mean and I was like, I don't know, I just, the setup, something doesn't feel right about the way it's set up. Like, it doesn't make me feel right. I don't really know how to explain how I feel. It was kind of like anxiety and anxious, I guess. And so after a minute, he was like, well, go ahead and sit down and we'll talk. And so I'm like, you know what? I really should not be rude and I should just have a seat and like not be, you know, and not be rude about it. So I sat down and I still felt that like fluttering, that like panic kind of, I guess. And I just could tell you that I didn't like the way that the chair felt. I did express this to him. I was like, I don't like this. I don't know what it is. It makes me feel weird. And he's like, well, funny you say that because in that exact chair, like a week or two weeks ago, 
Annabelle was sitting right exactly where you are. Annabelle the doll. The real Annabelle from Lorraine Warren. And at first I was like, ha ha, funny, you know, good joke. And then he's like, no, I'm serious. So to be perfectly honest, I feel like it was kind of set up as a test. He wanted to see um, if I kind of hinted at feeling things, obviously inside of the um, museum itself. Which by the way, I didn't go in the front door of the museum, I went in the staff door. But when I walked in, so you go from like the bright sun in Vegas into the dark museum and I mean it is like pitch black. like. The manager even was like, well, I'm just going to let you stand here for a minute with me and let's just let our eyes adjust. Like, it's that dark. And um, he has kind of like macabre music playing, which is like, I guess, like deeper kind of symph symphony music playing. And it's very much, um, he's created an, an entire atmosphere. It's not just what you're seeing and feeling, it's also what you're hearing. So anyway, back to sitting down. Apparently I'm sitting in the exact same spot that Annabelle the doll was sitting in, which was intense to say the least. I'm not really sure how my face looked, but I'm sure I looked a little stunned and I'm sure he probably got a kick out of it. I'm gonna be honest and just say we actually had like the greatest chat. It was just kind of fun sitting there hanging out talking about paranormal. That's really all we did. It was probably the coolest interview I've ever been on because it didn't feel pressured. And it just was kind of like we had an even plane where we got to talk about something that we had in common and that we loved. So in the meantime, um, you know, I don't want to share the entire museum with you guys because I feel like you need a reason to go down there because it's amazing. I'm going to say that for sure, for certain. Um, but if you, if I tell you guys every single room and what everything looks like, you may not want to go down there. And let me just put it this way. Zach has created something that is a piece of art. If you think of a museum, you think of like the Natural History Museum or the Science Museum or the Art Museum. And you know, like if you go into a history museum, usually they'll have animals that have been um, taxidermied. And you know, they have them like kind of in cases and everything's lined up and all that stuff. This isn't like that at all. This is, oh, how do I explain it? Like, if you can imagine the movie 13 Ghosts, and if you haven't seen it, you need to go watch it because you're gonna get a better visualization for what I'm saying. If you take the movie 13 Ghosts and you take one character, like the prince or the princess or the jackal, even the jackal, okay? Imagine taking one character and creating an entire room dedicated to that character. Creating a um, recreation of where they lived or how they lived or their crimes or something surrounding that character. He has literally created a piece of artwork um, in each room, but it's like 3D artwork. Not everything in the museum is haunted, as in items that he has collected. Almost everything is haunted or has an attachment to it. But there's a lot of things he has that are just artifacts, that are just beautiful pieces of, you know, history that he's gotten to bring home and create this museum with. It is unbelievable. I have been to so many museums, you guys, including like the Smithsonian in DC. Like I've been to a lot of museums because I love history so much. And this has to be the best one I've ever seen because how creative he has been with it. And I even asked him like, you know, where did you get your inspiration? Like, how did you get these ideas? And he's like, I don't know. I would just wake up and it would come to me. And I mean, some of the rooms are beautiful, so it's not all, um, you know, gory and horror and stuff like that. So don't think you're going to go in and it's all dark and death. It's not. But, you know, everything he's done is just unbelievable. One of the rooms is an actual art gallery. Um, it's unbelievable. I don't even know how to explain it. So I went in... There's several wings to this museum. It is gigantic, including a basement, including a top level. The top level is still being worked on. The basement has nothing in it. He basically will not put anything in the basement because there were satanic rituals that happened down there. He's thoroughly afraid of the basement. He doesn't really want to put anything down there, including you know having to put staff down there because he actually finds it 
dangerous. In fact, we were walking in front of the basement and I asked him, is that the entrance into the basement? And he was like, yes. Well, it's interesting because the door to the basement, it's a half a door, so it's not a full door. But it's a half a door and it was open about an inch, if that. Maybe a half inch. It wasn't even open much. But he literally pushed it shut like he wanted it to like be as closed as shut as it could be. Like he doesn't even want that inch to be open. So he's dead serious when he says that the basement is not a good place to be in. For being a haunted location, you would think that I got bad vibes in each room or some sort of weird vibes. I'm going to be honest and say that every single room feels different depending on what the theme is, depending on what items are in there. Um, he has set an atmosphere with even music in each room. I mean, it's unbelievable, you guys, like what he has done. Like, I feel like, I mean, we know we love Ghost Adventures. We're a Ghost Adventures fan. We all know that we are. Um, you know, Zach Bagans is the best executive producer in the business. He is authentic. He's real. Um, he doesn't put fake evidence out there. You know, he works really hard for all the series that he's done. But I almost feel like this museum has topped everything he's done. And I know that sounds crazy. Like, it almost sounds like, how do you top Ghost Adventures? Well, you do, and this is it. And it's because, I mean, maybe it's just me because I love history and artwork. But what he has created, it's imagine a ghost hunter or a ghost investigator walking into an atmosphere that um, has been recreated for a serial killer or has been recreated for a haunted, a haunted piano or a haunted piece of artwork. He's created what we as ghost hunters imagine we are seeing when we're investigating, he has created it in real life. And it's beautiful. He has um, this huge stained glass wall that he, I think he said he got from Europe. Don't quote me on that. Um, but he had it sent over from Europe from the 1800s and it's unbelievable. I mean, you can't even, I've never seen anything like it. Of course, you do think of the cathedrals and things like that in Europe, of course they're going to be much more beautiful than here because America is really only a few hundred years old compared to Europe, which is thousands of years old. So the things he has captured and been able to bring with him to create this piece of art is ungodly. It's ungodly. There are two rooms that I'm willing to talk about that I got to go in. One of them was Dr. Kevorkian's van. I did get to see it up close. And you know, I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel around the van. And um, you know, I, it depends on what people feel about assisted suicide, if they agree or not. That could get into a deep, in-depth political discussion that I'm not willing to do, to be honest. All I'm going to say is I've had some family that have suffered tremendously from horrible diseases like cancer and they would have chosen to end their life early because how much in pain they were and even doctors couldn't help with their pain management. So I have to say that since I've seen family and friends go through some really horrible things that I would have supported them with assisted suicide. So I didn't really have the biggest creepers against Dr. Kevorkian and the van itself, but I'll say that that room actually had really good energy. Like, I don't know why, but like you walk in that room, which, you know, you're right in front of a van <laughs> that has probably killed hundreds of people or however many that he admitted to in court, right? But you're in this room with a van, you would think that because so many people died in the van, that it would be dark and scary and depressing. It wasn't. And for some reason, when I walked in there, like I wanted to smile and it, I don't know why, like it just made me happy. And I know that sounds really weird, like, and I'm not, I promise I'm not finding humor in death at all, but it just did. It had really good energy. And I feel like maybe that's, uh, you know, Dr. Kevorkian, his purpose really was to give them an, a second chance at another life or something. And I felt like it was just really good energy. Now, the interesting thing was Zach said every single day, the energy shifts in every room. Like you might go in there tomorrow and it could be dark and depressing. So it's just, I found it really interesting. The one other room that I'm willing to talk about is a room I got sick in. So most of the rooms, you know, you can pretty much tell what they are from the outside. You guys have seen the puppet room on TV, you know, all that stuff. You know what the theme is going to be walking in. 
there was one room in particular and um, Zach really wanted me to go in this room. Now, looking back, I think he may have been testing my paranormal skills to see how I felt. So when you first approach the threshold of the doorway, there's no sign that says where you're going. There is no um, really hint what you're about to walk into. Um, and I couldn't really tell from where I was standing what it was. But when I hit the threshold of the door to walk in this room, I felt nauseous. I felt sick. I got these horrible cramps in my stomach as if someone was twisting my stomach. When I stood there and stared at it for a while, I even, by the way, expressed this to Zach. I was like, I don't feel good, I feel sick. And he's laughing. I think he's laughing because he knew I was like actually feeling the energy of what was there. And I'm like, I just really don't want to go in here. You know, like I just, I don't know what it is, but I really don't want to go in here. Well, by this time, Zach has jetted in the room and he's on the other side of the room. And he's like, come here, come here. I want, I want you to see this. I want you to experience this. And so I'm like, I really had a difficult time passing that doorway threshold. I really did. So once again, I have, I, at this point, like this is going on for a few minutes. I still have no idea like what I'm about to encounter. The room is very dark. 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 It's very quiet, oddly, and um, I just don't have a good feeling from it, to be honest. Like, it's just my paranormal, you know, spidey sense kicking in. And so as I approach him, I realize that in the middle of this room is this giant cauldron, and above it says Ed Gein. So if you guys aren't familiar with Ed Gein, his mother died. He became obsessed with killing women and grave robbing women. He would skin them. He would hang them upside down in his... Um, well, he would kill them, hang them upside down in his barn, skin the women, like really gross, morbid stuff. And when the police finally captured him, he had like almost a full body woman suit. And he told the police it was because he was trying to build a suit to wear to look exactly like his mother. So when I went in this room with Ed Gein, and I mean, I knew, you know, the history behind it, but I didn't think I was gonna get that sick um, from being in the energy, but he has recreated a barn, essentially, of Ed Gein, and it's amazing. As scary as it is, it's amazing, and you guys have to go on the tour. Like, I don't even know how to explain it to you because you have to see it with your own eyes. I feel like, and I saw a lot of stuff, obviously. I saw one whole kind of wing of the museum, but this room blew me away, and it wasn't just because, okay, Ed Gein's creepy and scary, but he's recreated this area to a T, and it makes you as an investigator kind of feel obsessed because I feel like when we investigate, we can't see those people. We can't see even the victims that these people have hurt or harmed. And I felt like this is what we want to see as an investigators is exactly what happened to make these entities become a part of this location or in his case, a part of the cauldron. So I'm assuming the energy that I felt was Ed Gein, you know, he killed women. I was, I think, the only woman in the building at the time, and I was sick. I was really, really nauseous. It's amazing. And I don't even want to give you more details with the room other than you guys have to go make a trip to Vegas here. It's like, there's an app called Hopper, H-O-P-P-E-R. Everyone needs to download it. Um, and you can like look at options for days that it's cheaper to fly in and out of Vegas. Also, um, Frontier Airlines gives really good deals and it's like $29 one way to Vegas and home. So it'd be like $60 round trip to Vegas. Everybody can afford that. So you guys, you've got to come see this. Like it's ungodly what he's created. I like my expectations like were pretty high because I knew you know, I know how he works on set. He's extremely particular. He doesn't like to do things wrong. He doesn't like to do things twice. He wants it done right the first time. And so I, I had pretty high expectations and my expectations got like surpassed when I actually saw it. I couldn't believe what he created as, you know, not just an investigator, but as an artist. So now in the meantime, I hung out with him for a little bit longer, chatted for a little bit about doing investigations inside of the museum. 
I think he's considering me strongly as the candidate to do the residency ghost hunts, which is amazing. And it would be like an amazing dream come true to do that because technically that's still in paranormal production, right? But he's not going to be able to do the ghost hunts until after he does the grand opening and you know he has all of the ghost tour people that he needs to to hire and everything else you guys probably saw him on social media trying to find extra help so you know the part for the ghost tours is going to have to come last so i will probably be last to, to be brought on you know and i don't know when that's going to be it could be six months from now who knows but when he has ghost investigations or ghost hunts you guys will have to go too because it's amazing like it'll probably be the most haunted place that you've ever investigated if you ask my opinion because I felt it the second I walked in the door so now I want to tell you what happened after I left the museum so I had that really bad feeling with me throughout the rest of the time that we were kind of hanging out in the museum and looking around and I didn't feel good I didn't feel right and I um, it was almost fight or flight obviously I'm on a job interview so I can't really flight um, and if I do end up working there, I'll be able to handle it, trust me. But um, it was a really weird feeling. It was almost a feeling of being stalked. And obviously it wasn't Zach, it was an energy. So I went out, I left after it was over. We were done hanging out, I left and I went to get in my car. Now I know I've talked before that I have a Mustang and I still have a Mustang and I work on cars and my car is in really good shape, it always has been. And I went to get in my car and my car was like not wanting to start. So it was like almost like something was trying to keep me there. Now take in mind, nothing's wrong with my car. Nothing's been wrong with my car. Nothing is wrong with my car. It hasn't happened since that day. And as I was like, after I got it started finally, I was driving up the street to leave and it was like my car wanted to die. Like it wouldn't stay on. It was the craziest thing ever. So as I'm leaving, I get a phone call from Blake and he's like, oh my gosh, come meet me for lunch. You know, I want to hear all about it. And I was like, okay, cool. So I go meet Blake for lunch. This is where it starts getting even weirder. So Blake and I just went to like a Chili's that's on the strip to go meet up for lunch and we ordered our food and Blake's like, okay, tell me all about it. I want to know, you know, about the museum and all that stuff. And as we're sitting there and I started to get to the part about Ed Gein, Blake gets nauseous. He is sick at his stomach and out of nowhere, you guys, he just starts profusely sweating from head to toe. And I mean like... It was like someone took like a fire hydrant and put it over his head and it was so weird because he hasn't been sick like he didn't feel sick obviously he just ordered a bunch of food and he's like I have to go to the bathroom I'm so sick and like so he came out and I was like did you like throw up or anything he's like no I'm just so sick I'm nauseous and he's still just furiously pouring sweat and he can't stop. So I told him, like, do you think I got, like, an attachment? Do you think, like, it was an Ed Gein issue? Like, what do you think the issue is? And he was like, I don't know, but I am so freaking sick. He's like, I think I'm going to have to ask them to take the food to go and I'll eat it at home. And I was, like, panicked. I was like, should I go down the street to, like, 7-Eleven and get you, like, Tums? Or, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't know what to do because he was just so nauseous. He, like, turned green and white. Like, that's how sick he was. In fact, I never finished telling him the rest of the story about Ed Gein, but it is weird that I had stomach cramps from walking in there and then he had the same sensation and he didn't even go in the museum. So I was sitting there and he was so sick and I felt so bad and I was thinking to myself, God, what can I do to help him? Like, what if this is paranormal related? And so I remembered that I had had my rosary on, I took it off while I was driving. And so I got in my purse and I handed him my rosary. And you guys, I swear, it was within like two minutes, I handed him the rosary and I swear to you, he stopped sweating. He stopped sweating, his stomach stopped hurting, and he actually was able to eat his food. And before he had like pushed his food away, he didn't want it that bad. And it was the weirdest thing, like I, I couldn't even believe it. So anyway, he finally felt better, he didn't feel that sick, and so we ate and then we left. And it was so weird, he was holding the rosary the exact same way I was with like the neck of it right here and it was dangled down like in a circle. And he was carrying it to his car while we were both leaving and it broke in his hand in the exact same place that it broke when I was getting ready to leave for the museum. So I thought that was really, really strange. So now when I got home after that, um, <laughs> I thought I was gonna come home and take a nap, but not today, Satan. 
So I got home and I like I have a cat and I have my dogs and so I fed my dogs and my cat and um, my cat had dropped a bowl on the floor and it was like a plastic bowl so it didn't break and my dog, my oldest dog Harley went to walk up to the bowl and my cat walked up to him. Now take in mind my animals are very close like they were raised as like infancy together and my dog attacked my cat and my dog's 12 and my cat's like three or four but like they don't fight you know ever like I don't even I think that was the first time they ever fought I couldn't believe they were fighting because my my oldest dog never gets mad like he's a very mellow dog and so I went to bend down to pick him up and like take the plate away and he attacked me twice and I was really worried because that's just not even before like I've had plates on the floor and they have fought over them but nothing where he's attacked me or anyone else and so I'm like something's just going on here and so I went to go to my bedroom I was just gonna like put my purse in there and like you know kind of try to get settled and all of a sudden I hear that there's another fight there's another animal fight and I'm like okay something's affecting the animals because literally you guys my animals never fight like I can't even remember the last time my animals fought. That's how long it's been. I don't even know if they've ever fought. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to smudge the house and I'm I'm not playing with this. Like you guys know, like I don't mess around with that. Nothing hangs out in my house. So I smudged and the house felt like completely better and I even felt better about it. So last night I was editing, as you guys know, if you follow me on Snapchat, I was getting ready to post this video, which I've obviously re-recorded it, and my friends started to come over. It was Saturday night. We were kind of having like this little get together thing. And every friend that was coming over was outside like walking up. They're like, something's hissing in the bushes. And they were like, something's hissing outside. And then like when my friends would go outside in the back, they would be like, there's something so oppressive out there. And so I had to do this like shamanistic ritual that my grandmother taught me and it went away like my friends were fine with going outside no one complained of hearing any more hisses and it was really intense so do I think I have an attachment from there probably something probably followed me home something sounds like it didn't want me to obviously leave at all and um, but you know this is something we deal with as investigators I have to say that I feel like I'm seasoned and I'm pretty much a pro at getting rid of stuff and knowing when something's around that I'm not going to let it hang around much it's something that I'm gonna have to like swallow my pride for and get used to especially if I'm working down there um, I'm not upset about it do I think you guys are safe absolutely I think that certain people are just a little bit more in tune to it than anything else and maybe the energies heard, you know, us talking about me potentially working there and it kind of like it, it did that umbilical cord theory to me like I've told you guys about that I truly truly believe in but I am excited if I do get the position to be there if not that's okay too either way I think it's going to be awesome when it opens you guys have got to go like I don't even know what to tell you it's not really ready to be opened yet he wants it opened like two days ago like you know what I mean he already wanted it to be opened but construction always lags behind which he still has things going on everyone just needs to be patient remember he's a perfectionist he wants it to be right and look right when the doors open if you haven't been to Vegas you have the best excuse to come now anyway guys what do you guys think about everything I said sorry I've been gone hopefully everyone's doing well Make sure you tune in to my other channel for my film school chat about this week and for the giveaway for school makeup and school bath bombs and stuff. There'll just be one giveaway on that. Make sure you give my video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Make sure you guys follow me on social media and I will catch you guys next time. Hell yeah.